Okay, well, once you've got your pinned insect specimens, you're going to need something to put them in. Uh, and uh, there's a great diversity of uh, storage containers uh, for pinned insect collections. Some of the most simplest uh, varieties would be the ones that, say, might be used in a high school insect collection class or for a very rudimentary and temporary insect collection. Such a box could be just about anything. Uh, often cardboard boxes. This is a particular mailing box here with a lid that flips over. We have some styrofoam glued in the bottom. That's pretty much all you need. Here's the classic cigar box that many of us insect collectors started out with. Again, it's the equip. We've customized it a bit by putting in some styrofoam in the bottom. There's some disadvantages with these boxes, however. One of the big ones we'll talk about later, and that's that they're not particularly pest proof. And collections that go into these and are left alone unattended for a long time tend not to last very long. So next in line, uh, moving up more towards uh, what, what uh, serious amateurs and professionals would use are what we call Schmidt boxes. And these can be, again, homemade or they are available from uh, various uh, entomological supply houses. Schmidt boxes come in uh, uh, different quality and the price, of course, goes up as you start with quality, as, as you go up in quality. This is a, what we'd call a standard redwood box. These se seem to be uh, kind of on the, on the cheap end. Again, they're equipped with foam inside, but they have a hinged, usually hinged lid, and they're much more tight fitting. Uh, <clears throat> different boxes made out of hardwood are much uh, better because their lids tend to be really tight fitting, if you can hear this opening up. Uh, this is an old uh, style one. It doesn't have foam in the bottom. It has more of like a ceiling board for pinning. And, and uh, one of the things you need to be careful of when you're uh, considering using Schmidt boxes is make sure you understand what type of pinning surface you're getting. In the new modern Schmidt boxes that you would get from most biological supply houses, they come now equipped with very good foam. One important advantage of Schmidt boxes is that they're small and compartmentalized. They can, be, they can be placed on a bookshelf much the way books are stored. Okay, at the, at the pinnacle of storage devices, uh, we have the muse what we call the museum drawer. And uh, museum drawers are generally wood, and they conform to a specific set of dimensions. Uh, actually, there are multiple styles of dimensions, and uh, one needs to consider which particular style they want to uh, buy into when they begin purchasing or building these. Characteristics in common with all museum drawers are generally they have a glass lid and a wooden frame, and they may have foam in foam in, as their pinning bottom, or they may have a hardboard bottom, in which case they're designed to be used with what we call the unit pinning trays. And unit pinning trays, again, are a set of custom dimensions. They're made to specifically fit within a particular museum drawer. This storage, storage uh, technique, the, the museum drawer, is what is used in most major museums, as well as a lot of serious collections uh, that serious amateurs use. Here's a drawer uh, out of a collection, and it demonstrates the value of the unit tray system. Uh, insects can be compartmentalized by different kinds into different unit trays, and when a collection is reorganized, one merely has to shuffle the trays instead of shuffling the individual specimens. In that way, uh, some, somebody in a short period of time, in a half an hour, can l literally shuffle thousands of specimens without actually touching the specimens themselves simply by moving the unit trays. The drawers, of course, are interchangeable within cabinets. Uh, and, uh, and so unit trays can be moved between drawers, and drawers can be moved between cabinets, and it makes for a very large uh, and flexible storage system. Many amateurs like to uh, build their own museum drawers of different uh, 
different designs. Uh, this is a design here uh, that an amateur had built into his house. He had several hundred of these drawers. The disadvantage is, is that outside of his house, this drawer is kind of useless. A uh, major collection won't take this drawer. It doesn't fit the standard size of unit trays. And there was a lot of time and effort and money into making several hundred of these. That type of energy and that money could have been expended on standardized drawers, which could be regularly incorporated into many collections as is. A final note about insect storage system is the type of pinning bottom that you have. This pinning bottom can be either directly in the drawer or directly in the Schmidt box or directly in the, in the unit trays that go inside the drawers. In general, there's two types of foam that you see in the business. And the foam that most lay people are familiar with is styrofoam. And styrofoam is brittle. It's what an ice chest is made out of, for example. It's also not resistant to certain chemical fumigants that are used quite commonly in insect collections. It also, once you stick a pin into this foam, it leaves a hole. So you can actually wear this foam out by using a lot of pins in it. There's, this is easily obtainable at most uh, major hardware stores. They sell it as insulation, so you can get this uh, for your homemade boxes real easily. The type of foam you should use is now a modern foam that we've been using for about maybe 30 or 40 years in the business now, polyethylene foam, and it comes in many forms. Uh, usually you can purchase it in a sheet. It's quite flexible. You can't wear this foam out. You put a pinhole in it, you remove the pin, the hole seals up, you didn't even know it was there. This type of foam is what comes in most modern drawers and unit trays that you purchase from standard entomological supply houses these days. Uh, it has the other uh, great quality in that the chemicals, specifically uh, paradichlorobenzene, which will dissolve the styrofoam, will not affect the polyethylene foam, and that's a, that's a big advantage.